Hey, it's William Nylander. Welcome to Stockholm, uh, home of the NHL uh, media tour, European media tour. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually, that's actually a lot of ways. That's Let's actually do that. Let's use that one. Yeah. Yeah. William, first of all, thanks so much for joining us. And for all the uh, Swedish players that we talk to um, here in Stockholm, we're asking the same question to begin. And that is, what is the best thing about Sweden for you? Mm. Probably the the food, the Swedish food. I think you're the third or fourth person to say that. Yeah. What's your dish? I mean, there's so many dishes, but I mean, I got a, this, was, I don't know if it's Swedish pizza, but pizza's place, like close to where I live. And that's where, when I get home, I hit it up maybe four or five times the first couple of weeks. Should pineapple <laughs> be on pizza? That's the big question. Well, that's an order we usually go with. Me and my buddies, we go pineapple on the pizza, so... Yeah, you have solved the question. Mm -hmm. So that is a strong yes from William Nylander. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we get into what's next, a quick look back at last season. Uh, there was the big hump, the big hurdle, the first round. Um, the Maple Leafs beat the Tampa Bay Lightning and then lose to Florida in the second round. How do you and your teammates look at what happened last season? Yeah, I think that we, I mean, look at it as being, um, I wouldn't say happy, but to step in the right direction, I think, with getting past the first round and getting over that hurdle, because I do think that that was uh, maybe weighing a little bit heavy on us, uh, not getting past that in previous years where we've been up 3-2 and stuff like that happened. So that was great to get that off our uh, off our shoulders. And uh, I think going in the second round, I just think we maybe didn't have our foot on the gas as much as we, uh, as we should have. And I mean, now we know you win the first round. I mean, the second round is just going to get that much harder and you're going to have to give that much more. So I think that's probably what we could take uh, take from last year. Have you seen this Morgan Riley appearance on a podcast called Jake's Takes? No. Okay, so Morgan Riley did a podcast on uh, – it's a young fan. He's very talented. Mm -hmm. And it's a podcast called Jake's Takes. And he said that in Game 3 against Tampa, the face-off just before he scored the overtime winner – he went up to you and said, and I'm paraphrasing this, like, is there a play you want to use here? And because, and you basically said, like, no, nothing's been working. Just go back there and shoot and see what happens. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. And he scored. Yeah. So he basically said that you called the winning goal. <laughs> Because you told him not basically. I just told him to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, don't don't make a don't worry about me because yeah. nothing's working. Yeah. So just shoot it. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, I, I I think that that's kind of what it went down to because I was like, we're none of these face off plays that we've been trying to been doing nothing all 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 series. So I just said just just shoot it, and then he did his thing. That's it's that's hilarious. <laughs> he was giving you credit, just so you know. <laughs> well, I don't deserve any credit there. That's all him for sure. All right, where do things stand? I, like the, as you know, everybody like, and I, I'm just as guilty as anyone else. We're all talking. You're the source. Where does everything stand? Well, uh, look right now. Um, I'm just getting ready for for the season and. Um, my agent and, uh, Brad can do whatever talking they want to do, uh, for, uh, to try to get a contract done. Obviously there's no other place I want to, uh, play at. So my mind's only in Toronto. Is any part of you concerned that this won't work out? That's, that's for a later day in next, uh, after next season. So I'm not worried about that right now. Like, this is where I want to be at, and I'm just focusing right now and getting ready to have the best year of, uh, of my career and helping the team to to reach our goal that we all want to want to achieve. So that's uh, for another day to, for me to focus on because I still have one more year left, and um, and that's the place I want to be at. So there's lots of time to get something done. And I'll ask one more: Was there any point at all this summer where you thought you were going to be traded? Uh, not really. I didn't think so. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't too worried. Um, yeah, not, not too worried about it. Does anything worry you? <laughs> <laughs> You're the most calm, chill person I think I've ever seen play in Toronto. Um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> My dogs maybe worry me. <laughs> um, but 
no, like I said, I, I still have one more year and I know um, how much I love it there. And I mean, it would, I mean, it would take a lot for me to want to leave Toronto. Like there's like, that's the place I want to be at. And that's where my mind's at for, for the coming uh, year and for the future. I'm not thinking about being anywhere else. So, um, and the contract stuff, that's not for me to figure out. That's between Brad and my agent. And uh, when, uh, when, and hopefully they get that done uh, soon, it'll be good. What is it about Toronto then? Like, what is it about the city, the team, the organization, all of it that does it for you? So you'll say like, look, this is where I want to play. Um, well, like you got the organization, uh, they take care of you, uh, better than any other team in the league and with the staff, uh, the trainers and the equipment staff and all the people around, they just make sure that you, you're given the best stuff to, uh, to succeed and have success. And then you got the fans that are incredible. Um, and then the city, I mean, just basically this is where I've, uh, spent the most time in my life. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is home for me. So, um, I mean, with just my daily life in Toronto, I mean, that's just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, consider it home. I, I do want to ask you one more. And, and you know, again, it, this is your opportunity to say, to clear anything. There's been, like I've said, like I've heard that you don't want to take a discount if other players are going to take a disc aren't going to take a discount. There's been reports that you're asking for a minimum of $10 million. Do you want to address any of this? <laughs> the contract stuff is uh is that's just for uh brad and uh my agent to to dig into i mean both sides i think know where each other are, are at and right now we'll just see what happens i mean i still have one more year left so I, I don't really understand what the big rush is either to get a get a deal done i mean got one more year left we have a great team and and we go from there how do you and your teammates talk about this team right now? Yeah, I think everybody's excited. I mean, we um, had a great uh, off season, signed some uh, big players coming in, and obviously we lost some really, uh, really good players too that were close friends as well of a lot of guys. So that was tough, but I think that we're all excited and knowing what we've done uh, last year. Jobs one quarter of the way to finish, but mm -hmm. we're, we're uh, building towards uh, towards that angle. You know, from from our perch, we talk a lot about windows and how long the window is open for certain teams and when it closes. Do players talk the same way? Like, do you, you guys talk about like, okay, we have X amount of years to do this together? Well, I mean, for the most part in Toronto, I mean, we're still uh, pretty young, I would think, as uh, as a group of uh, guys. So. I mean, you look at other teams around the league, how long they've battled with their core group of guys to win a cup. So think of Washington. Yeah. Like I like I, I don't think that there's a, like a big rush in, in that aspect. I think that I mean, it's gonna take time too. It's not the easiest thing to go out there and just win a cup. Like it takes it takes time and it's a lot of stuff to uh to learn, I think. And I mean, we're also young, so now getting a little older, but. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the things I wanted to ask you is like when you, like Marner got married this summer and a lot of you guys were there. Like it's been, it's, you guys are still pretty young, but if you think about it, it's, you've been together five, six, seven years now. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want, when you look at some of the guys you started with, how have you seen everybody change in the last few years? Well, I mean, I think that like, Everybody gets older, maybe a little bit more mature, but everybody's still like, they're still them. Like from when, from when you first met them to now, they're still the same way. Like nobody has made like a huge, huge 180 or whatever. So, I mean, everybody's still their young selves, just maybe a little bit more mature, probably. Um, I wanted to ask you about Saint Rasmus Sandin. And uh, he was here a little while ago. And uh, we asked him about the day he got traded. And you, he talked, we asked him about the conversation you had. And he said, you know, first of all, that it's, he said, the two of you said it's weird not to talk to each other or see each other every day. Mm -hmm. He said that you told him the cameras are on you. Don't lose your composure. <laughs> but he actually said that he almost got emotional remembering the conversation, being asked about it. Because in that moment where he was going through a whirlwind, you made sure you were there for him. Yeah, I look like that practice was uh was kind of crazy seeing uh 
I mean, lived with me for quite a t- some time in Toronto and and stuff like that. And I mean, working out and skating in the summers together and stuff. So I mean, we become pretty, I mean, really close friends. So uh, seeing him skate off the ice there it was, uh, he just knew what was going on. So I mean, as soon as practice was over, I went straight over to the locker room and made sure uh, made sure he was doing okay. And obviously, it's tough to see uh, to see a friend like that go, but. Um, that's just the business side of it. Anything you in particular you've worked on this summer? I, I'm just working on getting better at the things I'm really good at. And then obviously trying to think, uh, about, I mean, small areas that, uh, that I could help, uh, that need improvement too. Um, so not just focusing on the stuff that I'm really good at and getting better, but small aspects to, to help, uh, the other side of the game too. You look, I could be totally wrong on this, but you look thicker. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It could be. Maybe I'm just wearing some baggy clothes. So you think I'm? I'm I don't thinking. know. The shoulders. I maybe it's broad. Like you, you look stronger. I have to uh, say. I don't uh, know. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, I. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully, hopefully the summer workouts have been paying off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm curious about a couple of players that, um, Brad tree living has, has brought in here. And, um, the, the two are Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. You've played against both. Um, what is your team getting with these two players? Uh, yeah. Competitors, guys that compete and, uh, I mean, obviously do, uh, do anything to win and been uh, successful in wherever they played. So I think they'll fit, uh, in with our team perfectly. Is that, you know, at, at the end of the season, would that have been one area where are you having a conversation with someone from your team and you'd circle like, okay, we need players like Tyler Bertuzzi, Max Domi, these types of players? Yeah, look, I mean, after the season, everything was also such a whirlwind. So, I mean, with everything going on and what you didn't know what was going on with uh, with the staff or anything. So, I mean, you weren't really thinking about like, like uh, who we should acquire, really. I mean... Plus, you're upset about the the mm-hmm. loss at the, at the end of the day. So, um, but yeah, I think it was a it was a great off season for us, and we also had another Swede Klingberg, so that would be fun for the, for the Swede group. <laughs> uh, some of the guys were skating with him; they said he looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, he's a tremendous player, and uh, I mean, I think he'll have a great year this year. What is the best thing about being a Toronto Maple Leaf? I mean, I think it's honestly the fan base. I mean, you could go anywhere and you got fans in the stands. I think that's uh, that's the coolest thing about it. I mean, I was actually, I've been on vacation. I mean, here in Europe, there are people walking around with Toronto stuff on and you're like, <laughs> that's insane. Does anyone ever say, like, does anyone ever come up to you or say anything? <laughs> I was, uh, I was at five guys in uh, Barcelona just standing in there, like waiting for the, for the burger and, yeah, uh, just some guy comes up to me. It's like, "Hey, uh, huge fan of uh, me and my wife are here. We're just, uh, was, yeah." <laughs> so it's pretty crazy. Take a picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, okay, uh, we're in Sweden now, and you'll be coming back to Sweden in November as part of the Global Series. Uh, the Minnesota Wild, the Detroit Red Wings, the Ottawa Senators, and your Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, personally, I love it watching NHL games in other countries. Um, every a hockey country has its own hockey culture. Um, what's that going to mean to you to play NHL games in Sweden? No, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, bringing an NHL hockey here, I think it's good for growing the game too. I mean, kids around the city could come and watch an NHL game. I mean, usually games are on at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., mm-hmm. 3 a.m. here, so they don't really watch any. So I think that'll be great. And obviously, family and everybody that's in town would be uh, would be fun, but it'll be expensive. But <laughs> It'll be fun for them to to see uh, to see some hockey too. Do you know that that's what every Swedish player has said yeah. so far? Is that I'm either going to be pr- playing that game for free, yeah. or I'm going to be playing it at a loss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably a loss. Like I got so much family. Both my sides are, or my parent, my mom and dad's side are huge. So <laughs> we'll see. 